Have you seen Cellmate Secrets on Lifetime regarding the Chris Watts case? I want to talk to you about the show and my opinion on the show in this video. Now my understanding is that the show was legitimate and supposed to be a legitimate serious video but for anyone that's actually followed the Chris Watts case to me it's just a little bit ludicrous. Now I know that this is my fourth video on the Chris Watts case but I'm still a little bit obsessed with it and I think so is the rest of the world. So by way of a very brief rundown of the Chris Watts case for those of you who aren't familiar, Chris Watts is the infamous man who murdered his entire family in 2018 so he could start a fresh life with his mistress Nicole Kessinger. Now, Chris was married to a woman named Shanann, and at the time of the murders, Shanann was pregnant with their baby boy, who they decided to call Nico. Now, Chris also smothered his two children, his two girls. So that was four-year-old Bella and three-year-old Celeste, who they called Cece. The Chris Watts case and these murders really rocked the American nation. There is a Netflix documentary on this case, and the world is very much still obsessed with this case. I think people are still so invested and obsessed in this case because no one suspected that Chris would commit these offences to his family, to his friends, to his neighbours. He was a perfect dad and a doting husband. And so I think people are just so sh shocked that Chris committed these offences. Chris Watts was what some people would call stereotypically good looking. And I've watched a lot of psychologist videos on this case. Now, some people think that Chris had antisocial personality disorder, psychopathic traits, and other people think that he had avoidant narcissistic personality disorder. So you would have heard of narcissism. Most people associate narcissism with grandiose narcissism, which is the overly confident, loud, I'm better than everyone type of narcissism. Now, Chris Watts, by all reports from family and friends, he was a quiet, reserved, and introverted. And so some psychologists have given their opinion that he might have had a different form of narcissism, which also lacked empathy, which allowed him or assisted him with dealing with committing these horrific murders of his family members. Chris Watts eventually pled guilty to murdering his entire family, so to committing quadruple homicide. And he later gave the police a very detailed interview when he was in jail. And he talks about his mindset leading up to the day of the murders, his affair with Nicole Kessinger, and he very much admits to his conduct and what he did and how he murdered his little baby girls and his pregnant wife. Now, this woman named Krista Ricello or Raquello, she is a clinical psychologist who allegedly started writing to Chris whilst he was in prison. It seems like a lot of the public gave weight to what Krista said because she was, by her own admission, a clinical psychologist. Now, Krista made the headlines when she came out very vocally and started to make comments in the public that she knows that Chris Watts is innocent. You can probably imagine how her comments that she knows Chris Watts is innocent. She's a clinical psychologist. You can probably understand how this made Shanann and Bella and Cece's family feel. So the show Cellmate Secrets aired on Lifetime on the 25th of June of 2021. And if you are interested in the Chris Watts case, I suggest you watch it. I mean, not for a factual recount or anything like that, but just for a bit of comedy, I would say. So the people that were interviewed on the Lifetime show were this woman, Krista, the clinical psychologist, her fiance, Dylan Holman, who was in jail with Chris and allegedly formed a friendship with Chris in prison. And also Sherilyn Cadle, which you'll remember, she's the one who um, went backwards and forwards with Chris and they wrote letters to one another. And she was also on the show and gave her view and some comments. So Krista starts off in the show saying that her mother, her own mother, was obsessed with Charles Manson when she was younger. And that the reason her mum got with her father is because her father had a striking resemblance to Charles Manson. You'll probably already know that Charles Manson is the American criminal cult leader. He formed the cult known as the Manson Family, a quasi-commune which was based in California in 1967. Charles Manson convinced his followers, so the members of his cult, to commit a series of nine murders in August of 1969. So this is the man that Krista, the clinical psychologist, comes on the show and says that her mother was absolutely obsessed with. And she talks about how growing up, her mum always used to talk about Charles Manson and how she was, you know, infatuated by Charles Manson. 
She says that her mom, just when she met her dad, was actually about to go and join the Manson family. And so it seems like, and you would have heard me talk before about some women that get obsessed with psychopaths or people that are in jail and they start to write. And you would have heard stories about how some women get married to people that are in jail, like Chris Watts. I'm sure he's got thousands of women writing to him. So Krista seemingly acknowledges that her mom was this way about Charles Manson and she grew up watching her mom kind of, you know, fantasize and be obsessed with Charles Manson. So kind of similar to her mom, Krista starts writing to Chris Watts while he is in prison. And from the correspondence that I've seen, Krista's responses to her, they're not personal or loving, they're quite general. And a lot of it is just scripture. He's, you know, talking about how he's found God and a lot of scripture. And so my opinion from what I've seen is that he's not writing directly to her on a personal level. Now, apparently, apparently, so you heard me mention Dylan before. Dylan Holman was in jail with Chris, and apparently Dylan and Chris struck up a friendship. Now, Krista sent Chris a photo of herself, and it was a photo of like her 10 years ago. I've seen the photo, um, which I guess she's wanting to put her best foot forward for, for Chris, who knows? But she sent Chris a photo with one of her letters, now, apparently, Chris sold the letter and the photo of Krista to Dylan Horman for a cup of soup and a honey bun. So apparently, that is how Krista then started talking to Dylan Horman. And within a year of riding backwards and forwards, Krista and Dylan, another cellmate, they became engaged. So a lot of people are giving weight to what this clinical psychologist says. And a lot of the deceased family are very upset with what she says, coming out very publicly saying that he is innocent and she knows he's innocent. And I just think it's important to put the context that she's also the same woman who was writing Chris Watts. He then gave the letter to his cellmate and then she started writing his cellmate and within a year she became engaged to the cellmate who was also in jail. During the show, Krista makes the comment that she feels like Chris Watts used her, which I find absolutely ridiculous. I mean, she starts writing to him. He's writing back some general, you know, scripture. And then she says that she feels like Chris Watts used her. Doesn't make sense to me. All right, so Dylan Tolman attended the show by way of telephone. I'm not sure why. He might still be in jail. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comment section below. But he attended by way of telephone and on the TV show, he doesn't admit to the honey bun story, like the sale of the photo or whatever. Uh, he says that Chris came to him and handed him the photo of Krista and said, God told me to give you this. Dylan also said that Chris had to wear a bulletproof vest under his clothes to prison. I never noticed this in any of the videos or the photos. Did you? Did you ever notice that Chris had extra padding? I guess they're pretty thin, but tell me if you knew this because that, that was news to me. Dylan also said that the closer he and Chris got, the more it drove a wedge between him and Chris. I mean, they're the main things that Dylan was saying. I don't know how much weight you've given to any of his statements, but they're the types of comments he was making on this TV show when he appeared by way of telephone. The other thing I find somewhat astonishing is that the clinical psychologist, Krista, when the host asked her, well, how do you know he didn't commit the murders? How do you know? She didn't say based on the evidence or what about this part of the evidence that was overlooked or anything like that. Her response was, well, I've seen how he writes about God and his scripture. And I know that because of how he writes about God and because of his scripture, I know he didn't do it. So that was her response is that she knows that Chris didn't commit the murders that he's admitted to and he's serving a life sentence for and that he graphically detailed in his, his interview with police. She says, as a clinical psychologist, that she's sure that Chris Watts did not commit the quadruple homicide because of the way he writes scripture. So Krista says that she is a clinical psychologist that actually works in prisons with inmates all the time. And I genuinely wonder if she's still employed and, and working in that line of work after this type of publicity and her very open comments regarding Chris Watts and her view on the case and her interactions, her quite intimate interactions with both Chris and Dylan. Um, that's something, if you know whether she's still working as a clinical psychologist in prisons, let me know please in the comments below. It might not come as a surprise to you that when Sherilyn Cadle spoke on the TV show, she talked about how Chris told her that on the evening of the murders, a dark force came over him and he felt like he was impacted by some dark force on the night that he committed the quadruple homicide. And he also talks about 
this in the letters that he actually writes to her, which is in her book. Another very strange thing that she says on the TV show, Sherilyn, is that Chris said to her, when he's released from jail, when and if he's released from jail, would she let him babysit her grandchildren? So Sherilyn says that she has 12 grandchildren and that Chris made this very weird request um, during their conversations. I don't know. I don't know how much weight I can give to that comment, but I just thought that that was very strange. And I wonder if he did say that, what would drive him to, to say that? I mean, testing whether she believed he was innocent or whether he was changed, I'm not sure, but it was a very, very bizarre statement. So my opinion on the TV show is that it's definitely not educational, it's comical. And if you're following the Chris Watts case, you might find it humorous to watch. However, if you're after some in-depth analysis of evidence or anything like that, it is not the show for you. My opinion on Krista and her fiance Dylan is that I'm concerned that they're making some of the comments and statements in order to have some publicity and potentially to cash in on the Chris Watts case and their limited interactions with Chris Watts. Because of how popular the case is and basically for money and for um, publicity, that's my concern given the content of their communication so far. I don't personally give much weight to anything that they've said. Have you seen the video yet and what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this content, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.